confirm that your beacons are going out. Come on! Trying to transmit, god damn it. Okay, so at this time... Alright guys, welcome back to the Avalanche. It's been a week since I've installed my Yesu FTM 400 radio and it's been awesome. It's been such a cool learning experience and all the functionalities that this radio has over say my Beofang handy talkies. Uh, some of the cool features is APRS and Wires X. APRS has been the thing I've been wor working on and studying for the last week, and I can see I'm getting pretty good and confident with it. So for today, I want to show you how to get started on the basics, just to how to get the program running, and you can start seeing your beacons and your little icons transmitting on the map. So without ado, I've reset my radio to factory specs because I have everything saved on my SD card. So we're going to have to start off with my call sign. Once you do this the first time, you shouldn't have to keep doing this, but since I reset, I have to. So to get started on APRS, we're going to go right to the selection. Hold down your display setup button for about three seconds, and you get to the setup menu. Now on the lower uh, left, you have the APRS. You have a way you can either touch it, which is easiest. You can rotate this knob and select it that way. So we'll just go ahead and touch this. So once you get into APRS, there's a lot of different settings and functions. You can leave most of these to the factory settings because the computer and the uh, engineers have done all the work for you. But there are some things you do have to turn on and activate for this system to work. The most important thing you have to turn on is the APRS modem. That's just a simple on and off. And what that's doing is it's the internal modem sending the data out into the waves. Call sign. That's down at uh, number 23 in the selection menu. Now your call sign is your basic call sign. And then you have to give yourself a number identifier. Now, since this is a mobile radio in my vehicle, it's gonna be number nine. I'm gonna post up on the side here what the different naming conventions are and what you should be choosing. But for most of you folks that are putting this in your car, truck, uh, it's gonna be your call sign with the dash zero nine. And then it should appear just KC1BXX9. Next thing we're gonna go down to is your position. Now this should already be factory set to, which it is, GPS. But you could select this and make it manual, and then you would have to put in your own um, coordinates and latitude longitude. But for this, since you have the GPS built in there, we're gonna leave that as is. It's down number 28, which is your symbol. So if we go ahead and select this, click on the car, and you can start rotating through, and hopefully you're seeing all this. You got cool little things you can select. Airplane guy walking, uh, ambulance, bike. One I like to settle on is the Jeep here. So I'm just going to select Jeep, and that's going to be my icon for APRS. But there's plenty of other ones you can use based on your needs and your functionality. So we'll go with the Jeep icon. And you'll see how that comes into play. Uh, position comment, while we're right here, I'll just select this. You can do a few other things, on route, in service, returning, uh, committed, and special. This will show up when you do your beacons on your data file. I'm just gonna leave off duty. So every time this sends out a transmission, you're technically sending out a beacon. So we gotta set those settings where it works for the best. Now I assume, and most folks, you're gonna wanna go to auto, and you can set the time interval, which is right here to the right, to how many times you want the beacon to be set off. A lot of folks online say you don't want to overdo it. So 30 seconds, that's like, that's a lot. You're going to be driving and you're going to see beacons all day, every day. And if you're going to be in the car for a few hours, I don't think you, you need that too much. So for now, we're going to go ahead and set it to two minutes. And basically all I'm saying is, when you're selecting your beacon, you want to select something that's not going to flood the airwaves and two minutes seems to be good. Okay, so whenever you send a beacon out, you're gonna send a little message as well with a lot of data. You can customize this message to say something like, let's QSY over to a certain station because that's where I'm hanging out and let's talk there. Especially if you're talking to people within a certain radius, they can just hop on and jam with you. What you can do is go to like text one, this is your first message and you can have up to five of these. You're gonna click on this. And it's going to have this little extra thing where it can tell, uh, embed in the message, the frequency or the frequency squelch and shift. For this one, I'm just going to do something basic. And I'm just going to say like, hey, check out this YouTube video. So I'm going to select none. And this is, uh, hopefully I won't block the camera. I'm just going to say...
check out my ham videos on YouTube. Search GI Bro. That's where you're watching this. And I'll hit enter. Now I'll go up to select, and I'm just going to say select text one. Because if I was to go down here, you can see I have two, three, four, five with nothing in it. And if I select those, well, nothing's going to appear. So we'll select one for this test. So there's one other thing that we need to tweak before we get rock and roll, and that's APRS pop-up. What this is going to do is it's going to restrict how long the beacons appear, as well as messages on our screen. Because as you're driving, it gets a little crowded when people are just showing beacons all over the place. Now for a beacon, I'm just going to have it set to three seconds just for this test. You can have it longer if you want to read it, but while you're driving, it gets a little distracting. And I'll leave a message on at 10 because if they're sending me a message, I won't mind reading it. You can also set your packet, but since you're sending yours, what do you really care? So we'll just go to back. APRS is basically all set up in the APRS settings. But one last thing I want to show you before we move on is your data band select. So if we go down to the data selection and data band select, you're going to notice APRS and data is set to B band fixed. That means it's going to be on the lower portion of your radio and it's going to stay there and that's how it has to transmit. If you, for whatever reason, want to change that, you can go ahead and click and scroll through to A band fixed and that way it does the A. But for me, B just makes sense. It's out of the way and it doesn't bother me. All right, so at this time, everything is basically programmed for APRS to start working, except for your frequency. And once you get programming, I highly recommend just making an APRS channel. That way you can lock it in. But we'll just hit do it manually for this time. And that's 144. 390. Okay, so at this time you should be transmitting and there's a few icons you need to make sure appear that you're transmitting properly. In the upper right hand corner there's an APRS, your satellite dish, and this little circle icon there. If you're missing any of those you're not going to be transmitting properly. Not to mention your frequency. You have to have all four of those things to work. And any time here we're going to start getting a lot of frequencies that are going to start coming in. And they're going to come in one time just like this. And this is what you're going to see. You're going to see N1, MD, weather, and a bunch of other details. It's really loud, and as you're driving, it can get super annoying. So I highly recommend, just like that, turn down your volume on the B band. I turn it all the way down. I don't need to even hear it. Now, let's say you see a, a beacon come up, and you're like this guy. And you're like, oh, cool, he's got his, his email, and you want to send him something. I don't know. But you missed it quick. What I, what you can do real quick is hold on your F button or tap your F button. It's going to bring up this search icon. Go to S list, and this will log all your previous beacons that have been received. So we'll go down to let's pick something where somebody's got a message because on the left has your uh, your your call, your time, weather, or what style of a beacon, and then it's got a message W1FN. This has a website and a uh, IP gate, all that stuff, that our I gate, all the, the details you would need to get digitally. If we go back, we can select another one. This guy, this is a weather beacon, uh, and it's telling you it's from Colchester. It tells you the direction on the satellite. It's 30.4 miles away and what the temperature and everything is there. Okay, so now hopefully you see how the beacons work and how they come in and how you can filter through them. Another cool thing you can do is text messaging through APRS. Now, it's kind of tough because it's a hit or miss kind of thing, and a lot of people, they can't see the text through their certain radios. For mine, I have a great view, but a lot of the other radios are very limited. I know this gentleman here, KA1PIJ, he's a coworker of mine. He's visiting up from Florida. I'm going to see if he responds to a text that I'm going to send him right now because he's driving around in the area. So to send him a text message, I'm just going to open up his, um, his beacon, click in this bottom corner, and I'm going to hit reply. Edit text. So I just put in hi again, just testing APRS messaging. I have that. I can add more or take out. I'm just going to go up to the upper right where it says message transmit or message TX. And I have just sent that. If I go to my message list, there it is. I can open it. Now, if you notice, in the upper right, as a TX 4 and 5, that means it's going to try transmitting five times until it's received. Okay, so I can tell our buddy didn't receive our transmit or our text message. And that's indicated here because it says TX period. When we open up the message, it says TX out. That means he's TX out of range or his radio's off. And I think it's because he just had his cell phone. He turned off the program, meaning he's just not there anymore. So we can try another day. Now, moving back to this 
main screen here, there's a few things you're gonna wanna know. First off, if you do run into an issue where your Beacon logo is not showing up, this Beacon button right here is how you turn that on and off. And when you just, it's a simple click of that, and you'll notice every time I click it, the Beacon arrives. Another dumb Beacon. Now, let's say you're driving around and you have your Beacon setting at 15 or 30 minutes or at the widest your, your uh, radio goes, and your buddy's like, hey man, where are you? I can always at any time just go to this Beacon TX or Beacon Transmit button and click it. And it, I, it's tough to hear, but you can hear it transmit. So you could go around and actively transmit all day long. You could transmit every five seconds if you would, but you're gonna drive people crazy. But that's just something to know about Beacon Transmit. Okay, cool, so now that we're transmitting on APRS, we can now see ourselves on the APRS Phi Maps. So if you go to Google on a phone, on a tablet, laptop, wherever you got the internet, search for Google APRS Maps. You should come up with APRS.fi. Now I'm on my phone, I'm just gonna go ahead and click that. What's gonna come up is a basic Google Map. It's gonna be simple, but you can bring on the satellite view with all the cool stuff. And hopefully based on GPS, it should bring you around about where you're located. And here I am, I can see if I scroll through here, I am right here in Bristol. And it shows you a bunch of different icons. I got the uh, WX for weather transmit, I got a beacon to my left, and here I am dead center, KC1BXX-9. If I click on my icon, or click on my, my logo, here's what I come up with. It'll have, check out my ham videos on YouTube, search GI Bro, that message that we had earlier. It'll also show you your GPS locations, as well as what beacons and what um, repeaters we're bouncing off of. We can try a bunch of other things. Our buddy that was at KNPIJ, um, it looks like he transmitted a while ago. So yeah, he's been off the air for at least 15 minutes. That's why his message wasn't getting around. But it'll keep everything tracked for, I believe, up to 30 minutes or a few hours. You can set that custom, uh, custom search settings. But if we search around, we can go to other places and we can find, like in cities like Hartford, it's much more active. Um, I'm sure Boston and everywhere else, if we zoom right out, look at all the beacons and icons and everything. I mean, it's just overwhelming. We can zoom right out on the far map. And this gives you a total view of just how hot it is in the area. I mean, there's some areas that have no beacons going on, uh, but we're pretty good up here in the Northeast, a lot going on. All right, guys, so my batteries are dying on my uh, cameras and my light's getting really dim. I don't think I have much more I can add right now to APRS, but if you have any more questions or you think of anything that you, you can't get to work on your um, radio, please hit me up and I'll do what I can to answer those. My next video, I think, is going to be my programming video on how to do it manually as well as RT systems, and I'm going to start looking into Wires X. I know that's pretty cool and complicated. I've tested it out. I think it's neat but there's a lot more to that than anything else. So at this time, I'm gonna let you go. We'll do the next video over the weekend and uh, we'll talk to you soon, 73 all around.